When we consider the biomechanics of bone and how it responds to loading, it's really important that we consider how fatigue and cracking affect the structure and function of bone. Bone has naturally occurring microcracks, as you can see in this micrograph here, indicated by the arrows. About 80 to 90 percent of microcracks in cortical bone are found in the interstitial matrix between the osteons, and they have dimensions of 50 to 100 micrometers. Um, they occur in healthy bones, but and typically they'll be removed by remodeling. But under certain conditions, they can grow in length and become macro cracks that will lead to bone failure, which is a problem. Micro damage in bone depends on the site, so where in the body it is, the age of the person, and the gender of the person. Um, it's obviously pretty difficult to measure this in person or in living people, but a study in 1990 counted uh, 0.014 microcracks per square millimeter in the ribs of a 60-year-old man, and another study in 1996 found approximately 5 microcracks per square millimeter in the trabecular bone from the spine. Regardless, it's apparent that damage accumulates exponentially and more rapidly in women than in men after the age of 40. So you can see in this graph the women, the squares, the men with the circles, both of them experience exponential growth starting at about age 40, women more rapidly than men. In general, that's not a problem unless the cracks propagate. So under certain conditions, micro cracks can grow in length and become macro cracks, which lead to failure. Um, a common place that this happens is stress fractures in the shins. Many runners are familiar with this phenomena. And this crack propagation um, is what led to the failure of this uh, destroyer World War II era um, shipping vessel on the right of the slide. But in the body, uh, it leads to bone failure, though typically not as catastrophic as these ship failures. So crack propagation is the result of damage that occurs when uh, something, when the bone is loaded below its ultimate stress. So it's not loaded near failure, uh, but it's loaded repeatedly and re and that's something that's called fatigue failure. So fatigue failure occurs when an object, or in this case a bone, is subjected to low stress cyclic loading. So what we mean by low stress is that the applied, the stress that's being applied is much, much less than the yield stress. And it's being applied in this on and off, on and off, on and off sort of pattern. This is a common uh, type of failure that needs to be analyzed in mechanical engineering and machine parts. So for example, this shaft uh, started with a small crack in the keyway of this shaft. This is a cross section of a shaft and at the top there's a keyway. And over many, many cycles that crack propagated and propagated and propagated until finally there was a catastrophic rupture at the end. If you load a object, a machine element from multiple cycles at multiple loads, you'll get a curve that looks like this. And this is a fatigue life plot. So on the vertical axis is stress and on the horizontal axis is number of cycles to failure. And so if you took copies, identical copies of a part and you loaded them at different stress levels and you just loaded them repeatedly until they failed, you might get a plot that looks something like this. If you load something to its ultimate strength, it will fail after one cycle. It'll just fail at the first cycle. If you reduce the stress, so you're no longer loading at the ultimate strength, and instead load below that, you'll get more cycles before the part fails. If you keep doing that and you load and load and load, at about a point at a point at about 10 to the 6 cycles, you'll reach this point called the endurance limit. The endurance limit is the point at which if you're loading below that, your part will have infinite life. Now, this is not true for every material. If you do this sort of analysis for bone, so you take a bunch of bone samples and you load them at different stresses, you'll get a plot like this, and you'll notice that it doesn't have an endurance limit. Bone doesn't have an endurance limit. These data were collected at super physiologic strains, so much, much greater than anything the body would typically experience. Um, but if you extrapolate them for physiological levels of strain, so about 2,000 microstrain, the fatigue life for, um, which is the number of cycles to failure, would be 4.1 million cycles in tension and 9.3 million cycles in compression, which is not surprising since bone is better in compression than in tension. So this is something to think about very carefully when you're considering how bone behaves over the life of a person. And it's also something that you need to consider uh, very carefully if you are doing 
uh, designing joint replacements. So when you design a joint replacement, one of the things that you need to do is consider how the joint is or the replacement is going to wear. And so you will do repeated testing, loading and unloading, loading and unloading to do fatigue tests to figure out how many cycles your part will sustain under the loadings you expect it to occur. Hopefully that's been a good overview of the biomechanics of bone and how it responds to loading. As always, bringing your questions to class, I'll see you there.